So to turn these hypotheses into statistical tests, we'll go through the same process that we did with the two previous methodological checks. So hypothesis one is that individuals' expectation of the pain tolerance induction task, their expected negative affect, will be positively associated with their actual experience negative affect. And what we've got here are two variables, negative affect one and negative affect two. They're both numeric variables. And what we want to do in terms of this hypothesis is to test the strength of a linear relationship. So we think there's going to be a positive relationship between their expected negative affect and their actual experienced negative affect. And that's a correlation that's going to do that test for us because a correlation is there to test the strength of a linear relationship between two numeric variables. So correlation will do that for us. Number two, we think that individuals' expectation of the pain tolerance induction task, their expected negative affect, will be worse than their experienced actual negative affect. So this is a similar kind of um, situation to the previous hypothesis in that there's similar methodological variables involved, but conceptually we're actually thinking about these variables in a different way for hypothesis two compared to hypothesis one. So for hypothesis two, we've got two variables, but we're thinking about them differently to how we thought about them for hypothesis one. And what we're thinking about for hypothesis two is that we've got a single negative affect variable that's measured across two different time points, time one and time two. So we've got two variables, one of which is negative affect and the other, other of which is time. And negative affect is a numeric variable whereas time is a categorical or a within subjects categorical variable. We've got time one and time two, and all of our participants gave us scores for time one and also for time two. So we've got related groups for this particular hypothesis. And because what we want to do is to compare the mean score between these two related groups, the kind of test that we'll use to do that is a paired t-test because time is our independent variable here and negative affect is our outcome or dependent variable. And we've measured negative affect across two different time points, but it's the same individuals who are giving us the scores for time one and also for time two. And again, go back to slide four now and see if you can come to the same conclusions that I have for these particular hypotheses. So hypothesis three, Hypothesis three is investigating that individuals with a high somatic symptom burden will have more negative expectations of the pain task. So we think there's going to be a difference in the expectations between those with high versus low somatic symptom burden. So we've got two variables here. We've got somatic symptom burden and we've got negative affect one, which is our negative affect expectancies. Somatic symptom burden is a categorical variable and a between subjects categorical variable and negative affect one is a numeric variable. And because what we want to do is to compare the mean score between two independent groups, the mean negative affect score between those with high versus low somatic symptom burden, the test that we're going to use to do that is going to be an independent samples t-test. And negative affect one will be our dependent variable, our outcome, whereas somatic symptom burden will be our independent variable. And our last hypothesis here is that the mindfulness instructions will result in less negative experience of the task, a lower negative experience of the task, compared to the individuals who got the control instructions. So mindfulness will be beneficial for people in terms of their negative experience of the task. We've got two variables here as well. We've got our experimental group variable and we've got negative affect too. Our experimental group variable is a categorical variable, a between subjects categorical variable, and negative affect two is a numeric variable. And similar to number three here, what we want to do for hypothesis four is to compare the mean score of negative affect two between two independent groups, two separate groups. And therefore the kind of test we'd use, that, we'd use for that particular hypothesis is again an independent samples t-test. So we want to test the average score on new, of negative affect two between those in the mindfulness group versus those in the control group. So negative affect two is our dependent variable 
experimental group is our independent variable here. And for the last time, I strongly suggest that you go back to slide four um, once again here and see if you can come to the same kind of test conclusions as I have for these hypotheses. Okay, so hypothesis one, our correlational hypothesis. Remember that we need to test our assumptions before we can just launch into the actual analysis. So the assumptions of our correlation are fourfold. Let's go to independence of observations first, because we know, that, again, that's met through our sampling design. We know that all of our people are independent people. Um, the, first hypo the first assumption here, that both variables are numeric and approximately normally distributed, we know that we need to check that by looking at the distributions of our variables, our two negative affect variables here. So we can get our two histograms, and you can see here that they are approximately normally distributed. Um, negative affect two on the top, negative affect one down the bottom. Negative affect one looks a little bit more normal than number two does, but number two, it's just a little bit flat on the top there, but it's still approximately normally distributed. We can run our Shapiro-Wilk tests to confirm um, our ass assessment of the graph here. And you can see that we've got Shapiro-Wilk results for both of these two variables, negative affect one and negative affect two. And this is testing the assumption that our variables are normally distributed in the population from which our sample was drawn. So looking at the p-values on the right-hand side here, you can see that for negative affect 1, the p-value is very clearly non-significant, 0.72229. For negative affect 2, however, we've actually got a significant result. So we have a p-value of 0 0.03326, which is technically less than 0.05. But this is one of those situations where we use the Shapiro-Wilk test in conjunction with actually looking at the graph itself. So by looking at this graph, I can see that the, that the distribution isn't perfect. It's a little bit flat on the top. It doesn't quite peak and rise quite as much as a normal distribution would. But it's normal enough. It looks enough like a normal distribution for me to be satisfied that the data here are appropriate for this test, that they meet the assumptions of the correlational test itself. So this is one of those circumstances where we're going to look at the graph in conjunction with the results of the Shapiro-Wilk test and use my judgment to make a decision about whether I think this is appropriate for the test that we want to run. And this is one of those things where it's it might be hard for you, given that you're quite new to this, to make that decision. But the more experience you have and the more you, the more kind of used to looking at these graphs that you get, um, the better your judgment will develop um, in terms of making these decisions. So in this case, we can say that, yes, our variables are numeric and approximately normally distributed. The next two assumptions, we actually need to look at our scatter plot, the scatter plot that depicts the relationship between negative affect one and negative affect two in order to help us make that the decision about those two assumptions. So here's our scatter plot. That's the syntax to get the scatter plot at the top there. And this is the actual graph itself. And remember that what we're looking at for this scatter plot in terms of these assumptions is for assumption number two to see any evidence of a linear relationship to make sure that there's nothing that's not a linear relationship going here. And you can go back to your correlation lecture slides and lecture notes um, to get some examples of what a non-linear association would look like. And we also want to make sure that there are no substantial outliers or gaps in our data. And again, we can tell that by looking at the graph. So what we can see here is that, yes, it looks like any kind of relationship is linear. There's no evidence of a non-linear relationship. And also we don't see any gaps or outliers in our data. So again, all of these four assumptions are met here, so we can proceed the actual correlation test itself. So here is our correlation matrix, um, and in this correlation matrix, we can interpret the correlation coefficient as the first row in looking at the relationship between negative affect two and one, the correlation coefficient being the first row, the p-value being the second row, and the sample size or number of observations being the third row. So we can see here that we have a positive correlation because this 0.2652 is a positive number. We have a significant correlation because our p-value, the second number here, 0 0.0077, that number is less than 0.05. And it's about a weak effect size in terms of the strength of this association, how big the correlation is. So we can conclude that there's a significant 
positive, weak correlation between individuals' expectation of discomfort and their experience, their actual um, reality of, it, of discomfort. And we can quote the correlation coefficient there and the p-value. So what this says to us is that individuals with negative expectations of discomfort also tended to have a negative experience of the pain task, whereas individuals with less negative expectations also tended to have a less negative um, experience, to have less of a negative experience. And that supports our hypothesis. That's in line with what we predicted. So even though there are some differences between people's experience and expectations, um, there's a general positive relationship in the people who had a more positive experience also tended to have more positive expectations. People who had a more negative experience also tended to have more negative expectations. All right, hypothesis two, our paired t-test hypothesis. So this is looking at the difference in people's expectations of negative affect and their reality, their actual experience of negative affect. So to check our assumptions first before we can launch into the test itself, then we know that our third assumption here is that observations are related across groups but independent across the pairs. And we know that that's met as a function of our sampling design by understanding how the data was sampled. Um, our first um, our first assumption here, sorry, is that our outcome variable, our dependent variable is on a numeric scale. And again, we know that that's met by understanding what the variable is itself, um, by understanding these, um, that we're looking at negative affect scores and their numeric scores. So the only one that we actually have to test is assumption number two, which is that the different scores are normally distributed. And in order to test this assumption, we actually need to calculate a new variable in our data set, which are representing those different scores. So remember that the paired t-test is looking at the difference between score one and score two for each of our independent observations for each of our people. So to do that, we can use some status syntax to make a new variable using the generate command. And that new variable is just calculated as negative affect two minus negative affect one. And I'm calling that different score NAD for negative affect difference. And if I produce a histogram on that different score, then it's going to look something like this, which looks very, very beautifully normally distributed. And if I run our Shapiro-Wilk test to test the normality of this um, particular variable in the population from which our sample was drawn, we can see that the, that the Shapiro-Wilk test is non-significant. The p-value is 0.3, which means that it's much bigger than 0.05. And therefore, we can say that, yes, this assumption is met. Our different scores are normally distributed. And therefore, all three of our assumptions are met and we can proceed with the actual um, paired samples t-test. So this is our actual paired samples t-test output. So we can see by looking at this output that um, we've got a t-statistic over the right hand side here of 0 0.38, which is quite a small t-statistic. And the p-value in the middle here of 0.7585 is the thing that we use to make that, uh, that make that judgment about whether we have a significant difference or not. And what we can see here is that because this p-value is 0.75, it's much bigger than 0.05, which is our critical alpha, our cutoff for significance. What this means is that we have no significant difference between negative affect one scores and negative affect two scores. So our hypothesis that people's expectations are worse than reality actually isn't supported. So our conclusion here would be that contrary to our hypothesis, there's no significant difference between individuals' expectations and experience of negative affect related to the pain task. And quote our t-statistic there and our p-value. So we can say that individuals did not expect the task to be worse than it was. In fact, their expectation was pretty consistent with their experience in terms of the average difference between those scores. So our hypothesis is not supported. Hypothesis two is not supported. 